Hi everyone, Pamela here. So I have always wanted to try and dye my own papers using some natural type of products. So like beet juice, tea, and coffee. And I just so happened to have some fresh beets and I thought, hey, look at that great water, right? So I decided to use the beet juice or water from cooking fresh beets. And then I had coffee grounds left over from the morning one day and I thought I'm gonna use those and then I did take a, a cup of tea and what I did is I had one cup of water and I heated it and put uh, five bags of tea and it was just regular you know Lipton brown tea in there and then I kind of let everything cool and you'll see in the in the little demo video thing I just used little plastic containers now I did this in my kitchen and the one thing is is I really thought about setting up my whole entire you know, filming system. And then I got lazy and I just put my camera that I use, which is on my iPad, I just kind of like put that off to the side. So the lighting isn't the best. Um, and also this is right around the time my husband um, had his hospital incident. And so I had to stay close and my studio was outside. So I just wanted to kind of stay near where the bedroom was and so I could kind of listen. So anyways, enough of that. The reason why I'm popping in before the video is I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what I used for blotting paper because you can really use any kind of containers you want to, you know, dip your papers into. And I just used, um, I'll show you one of them here. I just used, um, you know, little squares, you know, for the demo. And then you'll see um, at the end of the video, I kind of show you the results. And one thing I want to share with you it wasn't the results that I expected. That beet juice looked so rich, you know, and red. And in the end, when everything completely dried several days later, like some of the watercolor paper, there was nothing, there was no color. So yes, yeah, so I was a little disappointed and I realized, um, you know, it's the amount of water that you have to the dye, you know, that's coming out. So that's why the tea items kind of seemed a little more intense and the coffee, I'm literally, you know, grinding it in. But the beet juice or water was kind of like, it was a great big pan of beet water. So, I mean, I think that's why. Too much water, not enough, you know, color from the beets. But anyways, um, back to the blotter paper. I just went to the dollar store and I got one of these. Now, I hope you guys can see this pretty big. Um, it's a color pad for like kids. It's an art pad. And when you use this, these these pages in here, let me open this a little bit like this. When you use this, it's kind of like almost like a butcher paper. So, you know, if you had butcher paper, you could do that. But I just found this to be much easier because you can literally put your stuff in here and then you lay the page down and you, you know, you rub the page and you'll see me do that in the video. So a dollar, you couldn't beat it for a dollar, you guys. So get yourself one of these. It's really great, too, anytime you're wanting to try to dry something. If you're using, um, you know, a jelly plate, you want to have dry that or whatever. But anyways, that is what I'm using. You'll see me flipping that in the video. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Have fun. Um, hit me up, okay, on Facebook if you try this or if you have any suggestions. I am not a pro on dyeing paper. I just wanted to experiment, and I was bored. And I had a lot of juice. <laughs> so... Definitely hit me up and let me know what kind of tips you might have. And if you've tried something or you try this, I'd love to see what you guys create. Just kind of message me or just post it on here what your results were. Alrighty, guys. Have fun dyeing your paper. Bye. So I'm testing several different types of paper. This is a butcher paper. And I have my beet juice that I'm going to just slide this into. I'm just using my fingers. You know, it doesn't really stain that terribly on my fingers, so I wasn't wearing gloves. But you could surely use gloves if you want to. Then I have my tea. Um, I did boil this with about five bags of tea. And then again, I'm just really trying to get this all soaked up in there. The butcher paper is a little bit thinner, you know, and so um, I wanted to make sure it catches a few little air bubbles, but I wanted to make sure it was really well in there. And for the coffee grounds, I'm going to use a paper towel under there. 
Now I could have um, just used, um, you know, liquid coffee that I had left over, but I wanted to try the grounds and actually scrub them into the paper. Um, these are just from this morning's coffee that I had left over. Um, and I'll just uh, work these into both sides of the paper. Once you have your paper completely covered, then you're going to want to lift it off and kind of use your fingers to flake off some of the loose grounds. Um, I also found I had a little brush, um, you know, like a butter brush that you would use in your kitchen. And that worked really well too, just for me to, um, you know, flick some of those extra grounds off. So I'm going to lay the butcher paper on my blotter paper. And I'll do the same thing with um, the butcher paper that I put in the beet juice. One thing about these plastic containers that is great is you can always rub the edge of your paper along the plastic top and that helps you remove any excess liquids. This is the T on the butcher paper. And I'll just leave these here inside of my blotter paper while they dry and I'll just continue on all the other papers that we're going to be experimenting with. Once you have your paper on your um, blotter paper, make sure that you press down the top sheet just to give it a good drying. So I'm holding the camera to give you a better look from above what the paper is going to look like that we've put in the beet juice for five minutes, the tea for five minutes, and then also just rubbing the coffee grounds. And this is just two of the papers, the rice paper is on the top and then the butcher paper is down on the bottom. Now I've opened up my blotter paper to a drier sheet. This way I can make sure that I have enough dry pages between the layers. So you want to make sure that you put at least two to three pages of this blotter paper between your wet paper that you're laying down. So let's go ahead and we'll keep dyeing some more paper. Again, I decided to hold my camera over my work surface so you could see what I'm doing. This is tissue paper and I'm really struggling getting this to go into the liquid. Now you can see it's kind of all balled up here and I decided I'm just going to leave it. So I've moved on to the tea and putting this in the tea, I just decided just to slip it in there and leave it alone and not try flipping it over. And then eventually I'll come along and I'll put push my fingers on it a couple of times instead of pushing it. One thing I've learned with the tissue paper, it is a little bit more delicate. So I definitely want to gently rub these coffee grounds in. I actually tear my paper and I decided I probably won't use the coffee grounds again on tissue paper. I probably would just use direct coffee, you know, fluid coffee to get it to change the color. So I've set my camera back to the side of my workspace and you can kind of see that hole that was in the top of the tissue paper. And I really couldn't use my fingers at all to remove the coffee grounds because the paper is so delicate. This is where I started using a butter brush <laughs> from my kitchen to remove some of the coffee grounds. And you know what? It really worked much better than my fingers. And so I just started using it on the rest of the papers. I got a little concerned when I put them on the blotter that there was that air underneath the tissue paper, but flipping it over, you can see how delicate it is. And I decided just to leave these papers on here. I probably won't be using the tissue paper again. Here's a better view of the tissue paper from above. I 
I tried the same three liquids on just regular cardstock. Um, this is something that you could get, you know, at your local store. It isn't really heavy cardstock, so I put it into the beet juice. I also put it into the tea. And I also will use the coffee grounds on it as well. You know, I loved the cardstock with the coffee grounds. It's a tough little paper and it really took the grounds really well. Again, just remember to do both sides of the paper. I placed the cardstock on my blotter paper, but I wanted to show you guys the cardstock is a funny little thing. When you put it in the liquid, it floats to the top. It's one of those papers that just did that, but yet the rice paper didn't do it. The butcher paper didn't do it. I also did a deli paper um, that I didn't show you on camera, but I'll show you what the final results were. And that didn't do it either. So I don't know if it's something about the sizing in the paper. It was just funny. Now I'm going to try drawing paper, which is a lot thinner than the cardstock, but I'll just be doing the same thing to this uh, drawing paper as well. loved how the tea liquid looked on the drawing paper but I'll be honest with you wait till you guys see in the end when they dry they dried so light but we'll just move on to our next paper here we're going to test out 300 pound watercolor paper and just remember when you have one sheet of your blotting paper filled you want to put over your dry layers and really give it a good rub to try to soak up as much of the liquid as you can So now I found out with my watercolor paper, both the 300 pound and the 140, I pushed it in thinking it would completely cover and it got these little white air pockets. So you'll want to, see there it goes, it popped, the bubble popped. You'll want to make sure that you have it completely submerged if you want your paper to be um, fully color, covered. And I'm going to do the same thing here with the T. And the same thing happened again. It got those little air pockets in there again. And I just kept pushing it and holding it down until the air, the air bubble broke. Now, my favorite coffee ground rubbing paper was the watercolor paper. It really holds up to the grind, almost like sanding paper, right? These grounds. And I just loved that. It also has some little high lows because this is cold press. So it has some little pockets that really grabbed the coffee ground color. But just so that you know, if you're looking for a paper that will really hold up to the grinding of the coffee grounds, watercolor paper is going to be your best option. And again, I switched from rubbing the coffee grounds off with my fingers to using this butter brush. You could probably also just use a paintbrush if you had one, you know, one that was kind of soft with a lot of bristles on here. But I did love that this worked much better. I found that the 140 pound watercolor paper worked just as well as the 300 pound. So if you want to save yourself some money, I would not spend the money on 300 pound watercolor paper to do any kind of dyeing. They both took the color roughly the same and they both reacted the same way in the liquid. And very similar results with the coffee grounds. Again, the 140 watercolor paper was very sturdy, so it really reacted the same way as the 300 pound watercolor paper. Now, one of the last papers I decided to try was paper towel. But I realized here I had been using a paper towel all this time with the coffee grounds. So I really already had some of that color embedded in the paper towel. So I will just cut out a little bit of this area with some scissors as an example. And then I'll also uh, use again some of the beet juice and some of the tea. 
When it came to the liquids, man, that paper towel was super absorbent. Kind of sounds like a commercial, doesn't it? So that's one thing to remember when you're using a paper towel. Uh, just be really careful that, um, you know, it doesn't tear on you. My goodness, look how rich the color is in this paper towel. But again, I have to be totally honest with you guys, in the end when it dried, it just wasn't as bright. I just got really excited thinking, oh my gosh, look how bright it is. So I'll show you guys here in a little bit what the results were of dyeing all these different types of papers. And I did let them dry about two full days before I actually took them out of the blotter paper. So here is the big reveal of the color dyeing that I got with the results of using beet juice, um, coffee grounds, and tea. I was totally blown away that after about two to three days of drying, some of the papers <laughs> had no color at all. So now the rice paper, for me, um, it really took the tea, which is this one here, it took that color the best. I thought this was so gorgeous. But there's really not a lot of pink on there from the bee juice. And then the same thing with the drawing paper. Um, you know, I wrote beet here, but that's actually tea. Um, so the tea took really well on the drawing paper. But again, the beet juice, there's no color. And it really blew me away when I started comparing the tea on the rice paper with the tea staining of all the other papers. Look at the tissue paper, you guys. There, there's hardly any color on the tissue paper at all. Um, <laughs> that one I totally ripped. And the same thing with the deli paper. Now, deli paper is similar to tissue paper, but look how yellow the one tea was compared to the rice paper. Um, this is the cardstock. You know, I really liked the tea, but again, that rice paper is so much richer. And check out the watercolor paper. No pink at all. Um, this The tea looks pretty good, but on the, the, the beet juice one, it's only on the very edge. And I'm beginning to think it has to do with the sizing that's in the paper. Um, it just it was just really interesting to see the different <laughs> the different ways that this took. Same thing happened with um, the paper towel. Again, it, it just didn't really take as well as I thought it would. The tea was really great. I really think this experiment is teaching me more dye. But what was so funny, this was just a piece of cardstock that I put into the um, the big um, uh, pot that I had of beet juice and it died, you know, fairly well. And then rice paper. This, this is rice paper that I use the tea, but yet it's not as dark as the little square. And it could have been how long I left it in the fluid. And then one of the last things I want to show you here is I did use some of the tea grounds. That's the lighter of the two uh, brown colors. And this was just both on um, 300 pound watercolor paper. So the darker one is coffee and the lighter one was tea. I hope you guys enjoyed this little experimentation and I look forward to seeing if you try dyeing your own paper.